Hey everyone, today we will learn about Next.js authorization with Superbase. So what is authorization? It simply means do you have access to any resource or do you have the permission to do any kind of operation? For instance, in Instagram, you can create a post, delete a post or update a post from your own account, but you cannot do the same thing from another person's account. You are simply not authorized to do that. You don't have the permission to do that. And another example would be viewing a private account post. To see a post from a private account, you need to be a follower of that account first. If you are not a follower, then you will not be able to see that. You will be not authorized to do that. So let's see how we can do authorization in Next.js. So in the documentation, uh, they mentioned two types of authorization checks. First one is optimistic checks. Another one is secure checks. In optimistic checks, you check if the user is authorized to visit any route or do some operation. For this, you use the session data in your browser cookies. These checks can be used only in simple and quick uh, operations like hiding or displaying some element on the UI or redirecting or not redirecting to a page. The problem is that it is insecure. Someone can mess up with the browser cookies, the session data and send a request and if you don't have proper security checks on the server then anyone can mess up with your server and the database. That's why you need to do proper secure checks which is mentioned in the second part. You validate the user based on the data stored in the database. These are much secure and should be used for more secure operations like creating or deleting a post or delete your account and so on. For these cases, Next.js recommends three things. Creating a data access layer to centralize authorization logic, using data transfer objects or DTO to only return the necessary data. Optionally use middleware to perform optimistic checks which we have just talked about and you should do the optimistic checks on the middleware file. Uh, the middleware file actually runs on every route, every page route or every API route. Even it will be called on the preface routes. It means that when you use a link tag or router.push method, it will actually prefetch your page data even before the user visits that page. So the middleware will also run in that case. You need to make sure that the checks you are going to add in the middleware file are going to be quick, otherwise it can slow down your website. So they recommend avoiding database checks or API calls to prevent uh, performance issues. Let's talk about uh, creating a data access layer. It simply means that you should be validating your request directly on your server on every single request. Uh, for example, uh, the private account example if you want to visit a private account post then you need to be a follower so in that case first on the server you need to make sure that the request has correct uh, session data after that you need to make sure that the user is actually follower of that private account and only then you will let the user view the post so that's what simply creating a data access layer means then you have data transfer objects. So it simply means that you send only the necessary data. For example, if a request comes to fetch a user data, you don't need to send the entire user object, which might contain secure stuff like phone number, passwords, and so on. You just send the only necessary data like user ID, name, email, and so on. So in this example, here we are getting the user data and as a response, we are only returning some specific properties, some specific data. So that's what simply data access layer and data transfer object means. So let's see how we can actually do optimistic checks to protect any page or protect any route. And this data access layer and data transfer objects will actually be different based on the database or service you are using or the logic you want to implement. So I cannot show you that. So I'm just gonna show you how we can just protect a page and protect an API route. It's gonna be simple. So first you just need to go to the middleware file. If it doesn't exist, create a new one at the root of your project. And here you need to export a function called middleware. and you will get request as a parameter. If you're not using TypeScript, you can put this JS doc comment to get auto completion for the request object. 
and then you can just uh, copy paste some code from the super page documentation so just go to the docs and then go to flows server side rendering and then next year's guide and go to the step 4 hookup middleware and just copy this part of the code and I need to fix this up quickly since I'm using JavaScript not TypeScript so first let me just show you the request object and we also need to make sure the function is exported and I have put the middleware file in the wrong location you should put the middleware file at the root of your project or if you are using source directory then it should be at the root of the source directory so I will move this file and put it inside source and let's also import the create server client and next response now let's just return the supervised response like I mentioned the middleware file will be called on every single request even for stuff like font, favicons and so on we only want to call the function for pages and API routes so we need to pass an object which is config object and then inside we have a matches array and it's just containing a regular expression as string so now let's go to localhost refresh and you see we have a big object but we actually need this next URL object which has this path name property so let's create a array of protected routes these are going to be uh, the protected routes dashboard admin settings protected and this is gonna be uh, whatever you want uh, this is just for example and now let's just get the path It will be request dot next url dot path name then we're gonna check if the route is protected or not and now we need to get the session await super base auth get user so now we can add an if statement if the route is protected and there is an error in the session then we can redirect the user to the home page so return next response dot redirect then new URL and then you need to pass slash for home page and request dot url otherwise we are just returning the super base response let's create a protected page i will paste some code simple just rendering this is a protected page that's it now in the browser you can see I am now logged in and I can go to the protected page well I've been redirected to my home page again not sure why okay so here it should be session.error not session.data now it should work let's go to protected page And now I'm in the predicted page, so let's just sign out. Sign out. And now let's go to the protected page. And I'm again redirected to my home page. So our page is now secure. And you can do the exact same thing for API routes, but I'm not going to show you that. It's simple. The thing that I want to talk about is this get user function. 
in the second video of this series i talked about there are two function to get the session data first one is get user another one is the get session the get user function actually sends a request to check if the session is valid or not but get session doesn't do that get session quickly checks from the browser cookies and that's why get session function is not secure and shouldn't be used in the server side but we are using get user function inside our middleware and Next.js recommends you to not to use any kind of API calls and database checks from the middleware file but the get user function actually sends a request to Superbase. So should you use get user or get session in the middleware? At first you might be thinking I should use get session but actually you don't. The middleware file will run on the server side that's why you shouldn't use get session function and also server components cannot write to cookies. Cookies are read only on the server components. That's why you need middleware to refresh the expired auth tokens and store them. And get user function also handles that. So that's why you should be using get user function in the middleware file. You will see that everywhere on the examples. So that's about it. Uh, this is how you can protect a page or API routes in Next.js using Superbase. I hope you have learned new from this video series. If you have enjoyed the series, please consider like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. It took me a lot of time and effort to make this video series. If you have any question, please do let me know in the comment section. And if you have any recommendation, please do let me know. You can also find me on LinkedIn or Twitter as Daron John. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.